Um, Lauren, there's been uh, hardware store heat tapes around for like 50 years. What's the difference between them and heat line products? That's the question that we answer every day that keeps our business going, Laura. Hardware store heat tapes are inexpensive, old technologies. So if somebody's got, if a pipe freezes, uh, people can put a heat tape on it and, they, and hopefully that'll solve their problem. A traditional heat tape is thermostatically controlled. That is to say that at one end of the cable, when you buy a hardware store heat tape, there's a thermistor. It's a little disc that's on one end of the cable, and it has to signal the cable to turn on or off based on temperature. So let's say the temperature is nearing the freezing point, and that little thermistor at one end of the cable says, I'm getting cold now, I'm going to turn you on. Mm -hmm. The problem is, it's not like a thermostat in your home. It's at one end of the cable. It does not know what's going on 50 feet away or 20 feet away or 100 feet away. And that presents a problem. The pipe can freeze 50 feet away. The thermostat says, I'm happy, I'm fine, I'm not turning you on, right? The other problem with those heat tapes is that they are designed not to be insulated because when they turn on they put out a significant amount of heat energy and if you insulated them it would accumulate and it would melt and overheat a plastic pipe and, and it can cause a fire and if you look at media and research heat tapes have a, have a, um, a concern with them that um, you know they do uh, cause problems. Heat line systems are a completely different technology. It's called conductive polymer self-regulating heating cable technology. So here's the thing. Instead of a thermostat turning a heat line on and off, it doesn't do that. The heat line's a conductive polymer cable. So the cable itself, at every point in its length, microscopically changes its heat output in response to temperature. So if you have a water pipe and at the 50 foot mark, wind chill or frost is trying to hit it there, the heating cable will respond right there. It's a property of the cable. It's not a switch that says turn on, turn off. The conductivity or resistivity in the cable changes in response to temperature variables. So if a pipe's trying to get cold, the cable's pushing energy in. If the pipe warms up, it reduces its heat output. So imagine that. Now, we put a heat line on a pipe, we insulate it, be it metal or non-metal, we smother it with insulation, it can never overheat, and we increase its energy efficiency by at least 80%. So we use 80% less energy now than anything else on the market. So a heat line has a higher capital cost. It's not 1995 in the hardware store. It's just it just can't be. You cannot get that technology for pennies. However, it'll save you year after year after year in energy and as the cost of power, electricity increases every year, it's not ever going to go down. As that cost to us increases, the savings increase every year. And these are high quality, high end products, and they're made to last. So, what is the average cost to run a heating cable? Hmm. It depends on the size of pipe. It depends on the environment. Um, it, it's it's a variable. It, it's hard to pin. But uh, a constant wattage heating cable, uninsulated, um, hundreds of dollars, uh, depending on length. Um, yes, a month depending on, on the length, that there's a lot of variables. What I can tell you though, is that a heat line system, properly installed, uh, with insulation, we can also control with thermostats if we want to. There are various control options available. You can use timers, you can do all kinds of things to make them so efficient it's almost negligible on your hydro bill. It's, it's really amazing. Yeah, so if the heating cable can adjust its heat output, so increasing and decreasing its heat output, why would you want to use a thermostat? Good question. It's, it's one that we get often. Um, thermostats will turn the system entirely off. So if you think about um, the conductive polymer heaters, when you put them under power, even in August, 
uh, and even if it's warm, they will consume energy, just a little bit, but they're a user of energy. Thermostats, can t they turn the system totally off, and we use them to measure pipe temperature under the insulated environment, so that they're on the pipe under the insulation, so that when we insulate the pipes, we render them in an environment that's um, very equivalent throughout its length. So when we do use a thermostat, its contact point is very efficient. And we usually maintain pipes at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees C. Uh, that gives us a temperature differential to the freezing point of about 18 degrees. And that is to say that at no time will that pipe ever drop its temperature to the freezing point before the thermostat gives it a hit of power. And it, and it stays on for a very, very short time uh, to maintain that pipe. So it's called duty cycle and the thermostat will make the duty cycle very, very short. The system will hardly ever be on. When the thermostat turns the system on, the cables, because of their incredible technology, they will adjust and do what they need to do when the power goes on. So if the pipe has cooled a little more at one spot, the heating cable will adjust for all of those temperature variables while it's on. Once it reaches temperature, everything shuts right off. Oh, very interesting. Now. Can you explain in further detail what, how the insulation works and why it's important to consider it? Yes. Imagine you have a beautiful home. You just built a beautiful home and you bought the best furnace money you can buy. High efficiency, gas, oil, whatever. You bought this great furnace and you decided that you're not going to insulate your house. The cost of your energy would be huge. Yes, you wouldn't do that, right? <laughs> the minute you insulate your home, and, and now we all know that we, we, we put a lot of value in insulating our homes. We know that every dollar spent insulating is going to pay back. The same applies with a water pipe. A thermostat in your home is central to the body or the volume that you're heating, so it works well. On a water pipe, it's a different story because a water pipe's a lineal system. So we have to combine insulation with thermostats, with conductive polymer cables, heat line systems, to make them efficient. And when we insulate them, it's just like having a beautifully insulated home. They're just fabulous. So if somebody called you and said, Lauren, I have a water line going to the lake. I want to make it as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend to them? I would recommend that they put a heat line in or on their pipe and that they insulate it and we have different methods of insulation. We have foam sleeves that you can buy that are six feet long, three quarters of an inch thick. They're called closed cell polyethylene sleeves. You clip them over the pipe and then you backfill. The other method is to use um, um, uh, foam insulation board, foam, like um, uh, wet location approved. Uh, styrofoams and uh, that's an excellent way to insulate as well. What if you can't bury your pipe though? You can leave it right above the ground and you insulate it. Okay. And uh, We have products in the Arctic on the tundra right above ground. We have products in Antarctica right above ground wow. and in, in incredible wind chill areas uh, and uh, we can't bury them in some instances. Right. Where we're on Canadian shield and rock you can't bury them. So they have to be able to work above ground. So imagine the efficiency of it when we when we put insulation on. Yeah, so the insulation is key. Absolutely. Yep. Great. It's the systems designed to be insulated where all systems before heat line uh, are not designed to be insulated because they have to lose their energy or they will overheat and cause problems. Great. And the heat line products are safe to use on any pipe type, whether it be like plastic, metal, yes. PEX, anything? Yes, they can be used on, on, on plastic, uh, PVC, uh, polyethylene, uh, ABS, they can be used on metal, all, all metal pipes. They can also be used in drains, um, corrugated uh, drains that are often known as big O pipes where people have drainage um, you know, away from their buildings. Uh, if they freeze, they can tend to freeze. Uh, we have a system called Paladin you can put right inside those pipes as well. So. Yes, all materials we can freeze protect against, whether plastic or metal, but we not just on pipes, but we can go in pipes too. We can protect culverts that go under roadways. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot that we can't do. Wow. 
So I guess if somebody has a specific application, they don't really know what product to use, then they just give you a call? Pick up the phone or send us an email, and that's what we do yeah, okay. all the time.